This is an interactive augmented reality prototype that I created in Reality Composer in less than one hour with zero lines of code. Let me show you how I did that. First, I'm going to create a new default project in Reality Composer. And as you can see, um, it starts with a cube and a little button. And here is the, the scene, the type of anchor that your scene would be uh, working with. And by default, it's horizontal anchor. It means horizontal service, but I'm going to switch it to image because we have the image of the book here that we'd like to anchor the image to. I'm going to remove that, uh, that cube here. And I'm going to keep that because I might use that as uh, the buttons we have because I can customize the text and so on and the background color. So this one is like tilted, I believe 60 degrees, about 60 degrees or something. Yeah, so I want to have it fully horizontal. So I'm going to make it 90 degrees, actually negative 90. So it'll be facing up. And I'm going to move it to the side. And one nice thing that uh, Reality Composer gives you is the ability to snap uh, e objects to each other. So I'm using the shift button with the click to rotate my scene. And by default, I want to have that here. But before I do that, might as well just open my file and add an image from it. It's actually easier for me to go to my Finder and just drag the image here until you see the placeholder. And then this is placed as an object. So I'm going to place it and then delete it. That way I have it here in list of assets. And now I can just select it way easier than just importing it. Now, what I need to do next is specify the width and height. Unfortunately, because I have the book, I can measure it and it's about 13 and a half centimeters width. So not 37, but 13. That's the Biggest constraint is that you have to specify the, the width uh, and height of the image in uh, real life and in, in physical life in order to have it done in, in, in physical reality and have it, uh, to have it mapped into augmented reality. So 13 and a half centimeters. So this is about the size of the image in real life. And now I can actually now start to position my items relative to it. Uh, so that I know this is now a much larger button than I thought it would have been with the previous image. So right now it's at, uh, you can see it, it's at 17%. I want about like probably half the size, so let's say 8%. So now it looks much better. This is the button. This is like what it would show if like you could buy the Kindle version. So I'm going to say, let's say uh, text would be Kindle. Can't type Kindle, obviously. Kindle. Uh, 9.99 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I that button is positioned at the right height right now at the right uh, y position so uh, the directions are this is x this is the green is y and the blue is z so y position you can see it's like almost there it's it's a uh, 0.05 centimeters almost zero centimeters which is good um, and then I'm going to duplicate that using Command D and I'm going to lower it slightly. As you can see, the snapping is working as I'm moving this. And I'm going to position it to be aligned with the left edge of the top button. I'm going to say on this one, uh, I'll do the book uh, 19.99 and I'm going to reposition it here and then last one I'm going to say uh, have maybe the paperback and this will say paperback $14.99 so these are the three options that I have right now and I can double check they're all positioned the right Y position so that they show at the right height every time. Yeah, they're all the same height. So I'm going to go back. I like working, if I'm doing UI attached to an image, I like working almost looking down at the image so that everything is laid out. And then I'm going to switch to perspective, three perspective every now and then to see how it's positioned in terms of height. But most of the time, I don't want to cover the image with stuff. I just want things to come out next to it. 
So this is what the base UI is like. As you can see, we're still working in the main scene here. This is the default scene. We haven't changed anything yet. And I'm going to have a fourth button, let's say, a slightly bigger one here. Uh, it says add part. And I'm going to have that to be the color of the Amazon button. And perhaps on this one, I need the button to be a little slightly bigger. So I'm going to scale it to be 10%. Right, so I have those things. And let's say the perfect button here. Yeah, I'm going to have them all attached here. So this is the list of prices, the button, and then I want to display the star rating somewhere. So to do that, let's say the star rating will show at the top of the book. I'm going to have the star. And I'm just going to drag it and drop it right here, about here. It's pretty big, so I'm going to resize them and select it and resize it to 5, probably 10. Yep, that's, that looks right. So this is the star rating for the book. Position it. You want to have it the same Y position as the other ones, so 0 0.05 centimeters. So that's the same Y position as the buttons that we've placed. And I'm going to place five stars next to each other. Almost there. It would be really nice from Apple if we can select. I'm sure that's coming at some point, but if you can select uh, multiple objects and be able to uh, distribute them along the x axis, y axis, z axis, and so on. So I have five stars here. I'm going to select four of them and give the book a five star rating, four star rating. So this is about right. Probably a little big, so in order to resize them, I'm going to do Command G, size them all together, like maybe 75%. That didn't work. Let's try again. 75. Okay, that looks better. I'm going to push them a little bit to the side, and then I'm going to do Command Shift G to. Uh, Ungroup them. So this is helpful. Command G, Command Shift G. If you're, if you want to manipulate multiple items at once. So last thing I want to add to this UI is to add a picture of uh, one of my favorite people on the planet, Don Norman, and align it with this. So in the future, if you want to like click on the image and follow or see books by that author, that would work. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to place picture the same way I did before. Just drag and drop right here. Bo. He is a great guy. He looks really big here. So I'm going to scale it 10%. I'm going to place it at its about the same height, 0.5 centimeters. And I'm going to pinch, spread zoom, and see how it looks. Yeah, looks good. So this. This looks okay as my uh, starting scene. I'm going to align this so it, it aligns everything the left to the left edge. And I'm going to align this with the bottom edge, roughly. So you can't have alignment working here. But I'm going to teach you a trick because initially we want to have these buttons slide out from... I'm going to have to move them a little bit down. So I'm going to shift select and move these guys. I want to have them slide out from below the book cover. And if I want to do that, you know, the book cover in, in physical reality does not cover these buttons. It's going to, if they slide out like this, they're going to come out from above the, the book. And to do that, actually, the easiest trick to do is to place another image on top of this and like another version of this image here. And scale it properly 
it's going to get removed ten percent. Let's see if that that's too big. Too small. Twenty-five. I'm going to fine-tune this. Yep, that's perfect. So now this image will be displayed on top of the actual book image in reality, and I can make it so that it's slightly higher than the other ones, like 0.1 centimeters. And now you can see if I slide this, it goes below the image, and that's what's going to happen in, uh, in real, like in, in on top of the book when I, uh, when I project this uh, augmented reality space onto it. If I plus play, nothing happens because there are no interactions and animations. I'm assuming this is just how it looks in physical reality, but I need to do that, I need to actually go to File and press Export or press Command E, move that, save it to a folder, a shared folder, iCloud or Dropbox, and preview it on the iPad. So let's go see how it looks on the iPad. It shows the UI before actually detecting the image. It shows like the floating ghosted UI, which I don't like. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to scenes, add another scene. Actually, I'm going to duplicate this scene right here and make this startup scene. And this is main scene. And for the startup, I'm actually going to uh, delete everything. This is just going to be a blank scene that I'm going to uh, add a behavior to. And this is a simple behavior that says, when this scene starts, so I'm going to add a custom behavior, and I'm going to specify when the scene starts. I'm going to transition to the next scene, and then choose main scene. What this will do is that it will wait to show the actual UI until the scene is until the image is detected, and then it's going to transition to that to that scene showing the UI. So that way, it does not really display that ghosted UI anytime. It's going to show something blank, and this is the main scene I'm going to work from right now. So this is all done, and all I need to do now is, as the user, if the user taps on Add to Cart, first of all, let me just make the Kindle version selected by default. So I'm going to go to Properties here. And let's say I'm going to reverse the colors on these two uh, on this button so it shows like it's selected. So the text color, or actually, like let's say the blue one is selected. So this one will be a white. So text color would be, would be really great from Apple if it allows us to specify to do a hex color here too. So Apple, please. And uh, this is the blue. Yeah, it looks transparent now. And this is white. And I'm going to do the same for this one. Another feature request from Apple, please allow us to copy properties, add like paste properties like in the keynote, Command Shift C, Command Shift V. So text color, I believe it was that one. And then background color, this one. So now I know it's the Kindle selected. If I add to cart, I want to go to the cart, the scene that's showing cart. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate that one, yet another that scene yet another time, using Command D. We can right click and uh, cut, no, copy and then paste or duplicate. And this one I'm going to call cart. So far, I haven't created any animation. I leave the animations always to the end. What I, I do first is layout, first step. Second step is transitions, like the different states of the app. And then third step is creating the linking between those stages. And then fourth step is the, the, the animations. So this one, what I want to do is I'm going to do, I want to do a cart. So I don't need any of these guys. I'm deleting them. I don't need the ratings. Unfortunately, I cannot shift or click drag to do a lasso select here. So I'm going to delete each of them individually. And then 
this one here also and then add to cart this one I'm gonna move up and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this one return to book and I'm gonna maybe need like a slightly smaller font size here like eight And then more thickness. No, actually need more. Okay, let's keep it that way. And return the book. Let's say I'm gonna make this one uh, background in dark gray. Looks good. Now I need like a shopping cart here. I'm gonna put this one. Actually, just move the x the x position here, and it's still 0.05. So I need a shopping cart here that shows. The item being selected and so the item being selected and so on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I can do that with 2D UI or I can do it with 3D UI. So let's see if I have like if I have just simple panel that I created in Sketch, it just looks like a thousand by thousand white panel. And I'm just gonna drag it and drop it in the outer composer. And it's pretty big now, so I'm gonna Resize it ten percent. Move it out. A very simple and useful uh, keyboard shortcut is the pressing the F key and the Shift F to go from viewing an object to viewing the scene. So I'm gonna do this here. I'm just gonna do it like maybe twenty percent. 15% would do. So 15%. Now this is where I'm gonna put my place my shopping cart. Move it here like like this, and then a little bit like that. Just it down a little bit. The snapping is kind of keeping it in place. So I'm gonna turn off the snap. Zoom to here. Okay, so this will show the shopping cart with the book added, and then I'm going to need a checkout button here. So I'm gonna steal that button from the previous scene. Command C, and Command V, paste it in the same location. a little bit out of here so I have to reposition it and almost there we go and let's just lock it a little bit let's position this way and then up Call this one check out. Now what I need is to add the information for that book in here. So I could have done that using the same program that I did, like using Sketch, or I can do it using text inside uh, the prototype here, which is easier to do anyway. So I'm going to do text here. Actually, since I have that text already, I can also do it some way. With this number here, I'm just going to copy it, paste it here. There you go. I'm going to have a black text. size will be slightly smaller, eight, and then I'm going to say, text will say shopping cart. Nice thing that we can insert multi-line multi text so we don't need to copy and paste that text all the time to create different lines. So I'm going to left align it.
shopping cart and I don't need any word wrap so let's get mine say books title which is the design of everyday things Stuff anymore, it actually slows down both the workflow and the machine as I'm doing things. So, design for everyday things, and then let's say I'm gonna skip another line, and since the Kindle version was selected, I'm gonna say. Position that text here. So this this is a simple shopping cart for now. I'm just going to say I'm just going to say this is how it looks like when when I click on Add to Cart. Now it has the prices and the button to Add to Cart and the image, and then I need to transition to Cart when I press on Add to Cart here, and then back to Book. This one to main scene when I click on Back to Book. So all I need now is to create those transitions. To do that, I'm gonna to go to behaviors and I'm gonna create just a new behavior, custom behavior, and I'm gonna have it tap. And when I tap on, not this one, when I tap on add to cart, I'm going to transition to scene and I'm gonna change to cart. And do that it goes to cart cool so I'm gonna to go to scenes here and do something similar for this one so actually because I am a little lazy I'm just gonna go here and copy this go here behavior paste it and then choose here now the problem is as you can see because this is beta i thought i could get away with just selecting one uh, one object here and would deselect the previous one but still selecting one from the previous scene which i can't really access i'm going to delete this and i'm going to reinsert again that's what i get for being lazy and i select checkout or actually return to book and it's done i'm going to see go to scene main. So now I can actually go and test it here before I can test it on the phone because now I have some interactions. I'm going to press play and if I add to cart it goes to that book, to that page if I return to book. It goes to the previous page. So I can actually test the taps inside Reality Composer before exporting it to the device. If you're using Reality Composer on iOS you can do that actually without having to export anything but I haven't been able to get my hands on uh, the bits for iOS yet I'm hoping soon I'm gonna create a video about that next but for now I know this is working I'm gonna export it and find out how it works on the iPad now Now I need to animate those transitions smoothly. So the first one is to make those buttons slide out and those stars slide up. So to do that, I'm gonna actually just group these guys together. And G, can I actually group this one with them too? So image got selected by mistake so these guys and that text command G and then I'm gonna go to the behaviors here I'm gonna create another custom behavior I'm gonna call this startup and I'm gonna move 
this clock so it executes first. Not that it matters because it's a different uh, uh, different trigger, but if you have different behaviors with the same trigger, they get executed in the top-down order here. So for the trigger, I'm going to do scene start. And for that, I need these buttons to be all underneath that image and the start to also be here. So I'm going to do that before I actually animate them. So I'm going to slide this one down. I missed the start here. So I'm going to ungroup, select, select everything again. And then group. And then I'm going to slide it. To do the same for that's why I leave the animation to the end because it impacts the final look the, the locations of all these uh, buttons and uh, uh, objects so I'm gonna group these guys together too I'm just gonna slide them below here and then slide these two objects also below All right, so everything is below this image, and I want on scene start to move multiple objects. So to do that, I actually have to go below here, Let's do a little bit of rotational magic here using the shift and click so I can get to the back of that image. And now I have these things I can manipulate. So now I'm gonna move First, I'm going to move the stars up. So with this selected, I'm just going to click Done. And instead of moving them here by 19, I'm going to move them by is it 5. So let's, let's try to move them to the axis more accurately so it would align with the top of that image. OK, cool. So they move to the top here. So that's the first one, let's preview. Perfect. And now I'm going to do something similar here for and select these guys. Make sure it's just one object selected here because this is a group. And double check that the choice is correct here because. better okay done okay that's much better and then I can move them a little bit here this way and then let me check that sequence and then if I play the entire sequence oh it's a little bug here so let me fix this one so when I modified this behavior modified that one for some reason I'm gonna also zero this out and I'm gonna make it slide up. Okay, let's see how that looks like. Let's slide up first and then we slide left. Okay, perfect. And then I'm gonna add one for Dawn's image. Same thing. I'm going to choose this object instead, done, and I'm going to move it right here. And then finally, I'm going to double check this one, and then I'm going to check everything up, left, left. In reality, it's right, but this is an inverted one. And then finally, this one. Uh, so do this and move it all the way here. Now this takes about four seconds to pop, which is very slow. So after I'm done with this, I'm going to change everything here to my favorite animation duration, which is 300 milliseconds, 0.3 seconds, which is the agreed upon expert opinion about how long animations, UI animation should be. Okay, 
this looks better. So now I'm going to revert back to how this looks here and the original orientation and see how things look. Cool. So now if I play this, perfect. Now let's see how it looks on device. So as the scene transitions out, I want to hide all the controls again, and I want to go to the add to cart. So I'm going to start adding to this behavior here. I'm going to add new sequence. I'm going to move two because I'm going to move one object at a time right now. So I'm going to add this behavior. This should execute before everything here. All the animations should execute before changing scene, so I can reorder them that way. I'm going to go again to the back of my book cover and I'm going to select the stars done and I want them to be exactly where they are that's why I chose move to not move by because move by I have to find out how like what's the uh, distance here move to is like I can easily just this is like the original location for it when I move down here so this will move down, let's see, also 0.3 seconds. And if I press play, it's not going to do anything. But if I press play here, initial scene, and I click on this button, this goes down and it transitions to the next scene. So, so far looking good. I just need to do the same for the other stuff. So I'm going to add another move to put it here and affect it object is this group. Actually, the best thing to do is actually to do it in reverse order from last one. So add to cart will go in first and then the rest of them. But I can reorder that later. So now the effect objects are here. I'm just going to put them back approximately where they are. This is a prototype, so it doesn't really need to be super accurate. You're just testing the the idea, not the production stuff. So I got here and let's try again. Click here. So this one still has a little bug here. So the effect object is here. I think this bug needs to be fixed in uh, Reality Composer, hopefully, by the lease. And I play here. Okay, perfect. And Changes to 0.3, and then I'm going to do the same for this one. Move scale to move it here, and then put 0.3 seconds, and then move it back behind the image, and then finally, Mr. Norman. Hide you behind the cover. So 0.3 and move it back here approximately. Now, if I play this, everything goes up and oh, it's a little bit uh, inaccurate here for some reason. If I click on this, let's try that again. Let's see, probably messed up, up here. Messed up a few things. Okay, let's try again. Better. Cool. Okay, perfect. So it plays well. It's just because it probably moved the scene as it was playing, uh, testing the playback. So what I want to do here is actually uh, change the order a little bit. So I want this guy to move back first. And then. So this would be the first one to move back, and then this here, that's my dog scratching his neck and doing the jiggly sound of his uh, collar. And this one would be next. Actually, Don Norman would be next. So this one would be here. And then 
the stars would be last. So let's see that order here. Okay, let's test one more time. And then we name it to the startup. This one, I'm just gonna name it to back. This is our back behavior. And we're gonna put the startup here and this is on scene start. I'm gonna again move everything behind the image here to narrow it a little bit here so I can select the text in the panel and group them together. And then go back behind the image, move everything. Move this one back to you. And then move the checkout button also here. And then I'm going to create an action sequence that pops or moves all three in a sequence. So the first one, actually the first one wouldn't be the cart button, it would be the cart itself. So this one will make it fly. Okay. Go a little bit like this. Play it. Okay. Our favorite point three duration, and then we can add another one. Same thing for checkout. Choose checkout button. Done. Like this. And I'm assuming if the bug is still there, then this would also. Oh no, it works. Cool. Okay, so the last one would be also rotation two for the back button. Done. And I'm going to add it at the top here. So let's play that sequence. Cool. Probably didn't add the 0.3 seconds here. That's why it's slower. 0.3 and give you that sequence. Now if I if I'm doing a sequence on startup that repeats, I'll do the loop button and if I click this it will be looping forever, but I don't want that. So now on startup this comes from behind and I want when I go back this to go back again. So I'm gonna do the same like I did last time. Choose the object, so the first one that came back is this one. I'm actually going to move all three at once. Let's see if that's possible. Let's select all three. Done. And then for some reason it's not uh... no it doesn't work perfectly we'll just do it one at a time like we did it with the previous sequence so move two and three choose the cart object first Exact location. Let's make sure it's not really popping Look behind. No, it's perfect. Okay, and then I'm gonna move it here as the first sequence, and then the second sequence would be the button. Done. And here, and then that would be the second object. And then the final object would be the back button. Point three. Point three. And then I'm going to choose the 
this button done. And approximately this way. And if all goes well, crossing my fingers and praying, this one's slow. Ooh, that's a mess. Okay. Let's see what went wrong here. Let's see the back here. Oh, so something happened like there's a bug that made this uh, work, like jump instead of go back. So let's put it back where it was. Again, we're using beta, early beta bits, so I'm not really I'm not hating Apple for this. They've done a tremendous job in this for this tool in such a short period. Okay, let's try again. So the button is still going rogue a little bit. Let's fix that. Okay, now this goes back here. And this goes back here. And third time is a charm. And perfect. So now everything is done. If I stop this, bring the scene back to its correct orientation, hide this and play. Let's go to the main scene here and start it here. So play, add to cart, back. Awesome. Let's see how it looks on the iOS device now. And as you can see, all the transitions, the animations, everything works as expected. And that took less than one hour in Reality Composer writing zero lines of code. If you'd like to see more videos and tutorials in the future, click the link in the video description below and subscribe to Ventop's newsletter. I'll see you in the next one.